Good day judges, I'm Elliot Ko from Team Hexa Matrix and today we'll be presenting about our RoboCup experience in 2021. So here is the team. Firstly, I'm Elliot Ko, the team leader. Xavier Ko is the programmer, Ryan De is the programmer, and Javier Lim is both our builder and 3D modeler. So here are some of the following hardware features as part of our robot. Firstly, for the microcontroller, we decided to use an Arduino Manga due to its large number of digital and analog ports as well as its popularity. Next, we used a motor shield that allowed the VEX393 motors to be controlled using Arduino. Some of the choices of driving motors we had were the VEX393 motors, the LEGO large and medium motors, and the yellow DC motors. In the end, we went with the VEX393 motors, and they were easy to use Arduino, had high speed and torque, as well as configurable gearing. For chassis, we used LEGO parts, as they were strong and lightweight. For sensors, for the line tracing array in particular, we use the MakerLine line tracing array. For the sensors, we use a TCS3200 color sensors. For the ultrasonic sensor, we use a standard HCSR04 ultrasonic sensor. For the collection system, we use a combination of brushless motors and rubber bands attached to a metal arm. For the wheels, we chose LEGO motorcycle wheels for the front wheels and we stacked two on one side. For the back free rolling wheels, we chose to use VEX omnidirectional wheels as they can move in any direction, resulting in smoother turns and less friction when turning. Here is a CAD render of our complete product minus the Arduino and other electrical components. While constructing the Arduino robot, we looked into other robotic systems to see whether there are any more, even more efficient alternatives. We managed to build and program a small prototype with the new LEGO Spike Prime, and we felt that we were on the edge of a breakthrough. However, the COVID-19 situation worsened and uh, CCA was suspended. However, during our initial testing of the prototype, we found that it was, had relatively accurate line tracing and it was achieved with very little effort. It was very cohesive and also had less compatibility issues than Arduino robot. Firstly, here are the software features for our robot. Firstly, we defined the variables and imported the libraries that we needed to use. Next, we proceeded to set up the input and output pins as we are using the Arduino platform. As you can see, the first thing we run within the void loop will be the reading of the RGB values from our color sensor. Afterwards, we read the digital input from our line tracing array. Then we proceeded to check for the presence of green corners based on the previous input. And we were to either turn left 90 degrees, turn right 90 degrees, or do a U-turn. Afterwards, we proceeded on to line tracing based on these digital IR inputs. Finally, at the bottom, we have a bit of output testing just to, to test while running to see whether there are any errors with the line tracing. In the next section about the design process, I will cover some of the more important moments during our design process that were either setbacks or wins for us. So firstly, before we begin the, even the building the robot, we decided that we wanted to try something new by integrating different systems through the use of our Arduino as the microcontroller instead of you know just sticking to the EV3, something we have done uh, many times before. So uh, uh, firstly, we decided on what parts we would be using for the robot. We decided to use the VEX 393 motors along with the Arduino to drive the robot. For the wheels, we decided to stack uh, two two sets of two LEGO motorcycle wheels for the front wheels and decided to use two times uh, two VEX Omni wheels for the back wheels. For the chassis, we decided to build it out of LEGO as it would be lightweight and it will still be durable and on that day itself we started construction on the chassis. Next, we decided to test the robot after uh, attaching the microcontroller as well as the motors to the robot chassis. However, we realized that the robot was unable to travel straight and we spent quite some time trying to detach the motors, we changed the gearing of the motors, then finally reattach the motors. So after, uh, luckily for us, the robot was able to travel straight afterwards. And we also managed to scout out and attach a line tracing array on the robot. The next time around, we tested out the TCS3200 color sensor and we attached a line tracing array to the bot behind the front wheels, which turned out to be a grave mistake later on. We also test, tried to test out PID line tracing without, with little to no success. Next session, it was pointed out to us that actually placing the line tracing array in the center might cause the robot to go off the line due to uh, the position of the line tracing array and the front wheels not being able to turn in time before going off the line. After. So in the end, we had to dismantle majority of the robot. And we, but however, we stayed strong and we took the opportunity to reinforce the baseboard and place the light sensor, uh, the light tracing line tracing array closer to the front. 
Next, we looked into alternative motors since we were already rebuilding a baseboard, and we came across the MacBook encoder motors we were, which were already in a room, and we started to experiment with this control to control them. However, after much effort and the, our attempts to try and use the MacBook encoder motors were really unsuccessful, and we decided to stick to the VEX 393 motors. However, the good news was that on that very day, the gears for the collection system was printed successfully after three failed attempts beforehand, so thank you Javier for that. Next, we started fully working on the line tracing. Before that, we had tried many times to implement the PID line tracing, however, we decided that and no, felt that there were too many components to be able for us to use PID line tracing, especially the math that came into play. And we decided just to switch back to using digital readings of the IRS on array to try and work on the line tracing. However, when we tried to use a color sensor, we had issues on deciding where to place the color sensor as the places we initially wanted to put them did not work out for us. We had to dismantle parts of the robot to place the color sensors and only to find that it did not work as expected again. So we had to go through multiple trial and error situations until a suitable location was found. And thank goodness, we did manage to find it and the robot could turn with relative accuracy after some testing while detecting the green corners. And that was really good. Next, it was after that it was pointed out to us that our current power supply system might have created some large amount of noise, which is, to my understanding, caused by the hedge bridge while we're trying to run the motors, and it might that might interfere with the runs. Therefore, we had to solder on a new power supply for the Arduino and its components. We considered using a 12 volt LiPo battery instead, but we ended up deciding against it. Next, we, we started working with the brushless DC motor or the BL DC motor attached to the collection system. However, there was a big issue. The DC brushless motor could not run with Arduino. The motor mod we were very confused. The motor module appeared to be a conventional electronic speed controller or ESC with a BLDC connected. Yet we could not understand how why it did not work. In order to work around this, we tried looking through uh, the make block libraries for Arduino to find a reference for the motor controller. However, this proved to be unsuccessful due due to the library being relatively outdated as well as no direct match for to run a BLDC motor within the library could be found. Next, we tried running it as a normal servo motor, but that did not work either. The motor would just keep on turning on and turning off for a few seconds, and we found out this was related to power speed, but we could not find a way to keep it on consistently. We also tried looking for viable alternatives instead, online and within the robotics room. Yeah, we could not find any viable alternatives. The motors were either too large, or the, the RPM was too low to be able to keep the bolt inside running. So it was during this period that we decided to expand and looked into different uh, different systems. And we built a test robot out of Lego Spike Prime and tested its line tracing. Surprisingly, we found it to be very accurate despite the relatively short amount of time we spent on the line tracing. And we were quite likely to have made a full transition over to it if given enough time. On the 15th of May, sadly, CCA was announced to be suspended. And we had no time to prepare or finish up and we had to pick up from where we left off. And it was really very dejecting for all of us. Thank you judges for your kind attention throughout this presentation and hope you guys have a nice day.